What makes a good home? Is it its size? Its curb appeal? Its quality? Or the number of rooms it has? But despite thousands of incredible homes being built this year, this is the home that won the RIBA's prestigious House of the Year Award. And in this video, I want to answer the question why a house that looks like this ends up winning such a coveted design award and try to find out exactly what it is that these judges see that the majority of people simply don't. This building may look like more of an eyesore to some people than an award-winning home. Located in Tottenham, London, it sits in Haringey's Clyde Circus conservation area, and despite it being just a stone's throw away from a bustling retail park, numerous underground stations, and the world-renowned Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, this was an area that was historically known for its coach houses, orchards, greenhouses, and market gardens. And this is actually a space that's especially close to home for me, as it's also the place where my grandmother grew up. Now, most of what's built in Tottenham, and the majority of London for that matter, is made out of brick, and for centuries brick has firmly established itself as the material of choice for most British homes, which is probably due to the fact that it's simply so widely available, which in turn makes it incredibly affordable for such a resilient building material. But on a plot that once housed a failing house in multiple occupancy, or HMO, the team at Hayhurst & Co created this home in its place, using some strikingly inventive and effective architectural techniques to create a home to the highest of standards for a young family on a very tight budget. Now, despite the client's love of plants and the previous greenhouses that once stood here in Clyde Circus, it's bold to say that wrapping a building in polycarbonate is the right thing to do. But when you take a closer look, you begin to see that there's more to this plastic screen than meets the eye. Now, what's interesting is that most of this polycarbonate screen is on rails, and unlike glass, polycarbonate is lightweight, affordable, durable, and translucent, meaning that it can be transported and engineered far more easily, and it also allows natural light to filter through it when it's closed, which provides a sense of privacy for its inhabitants and a sense of enclosure in this very dense urban setting. Now, this material is commonly used on greenhouses for this exact reason, as not only does polycarbonate shelter plants effectively from the wind, rain, and harmful UV rays, it also allows for the effective transmission of light and the insulation of heat. Okay, but despite polycarbonate being great in the winter for keeping plants warm and dry, if you're a human being, Living in a greenhouse during the summer can be quite problematic. Now, this is where the genius of this house begins, as to get all of the benefits of a warm greenhouse in the winter without all of the drawbacks that you would get during the summer, by setting the south-facing windows back behind this openable screen, it provides shade during the summer when the sun is highest in the sky, while allowing the sun's rays to reach deep inside when it's low in the sky during the winter. And in doing so, it creates a space between the polycarbonate screen and the home's glazing, which is then filled with this resilient bamboo planting to provide some welcomed life to this urban environment, and also some additional privacy from the neighbors for this young family. Now, as you make your way inside past a fenced front patio and an outdoor dining space, you enter through this narrow hallway that's flanked by a cloakroom toilet and some storage, which then steps down into a large central double height space with one enormous roof light. The architects at Hayhurst & Co refer to this as a riad, which is a type of internal garden that's commonly found in Moorish architecture, in countries such as Morocco, Spain, and Portugal. Despite many double-height spaces like this simply being an extravagant display of wealth and grandeur in a domestic setting, this space actually serves a different purpose, as not only does it provide natural light to the deepest and darkest area of this home, but it also provides something called stack ventilation during the hot summer months, where buoyant hot air is released through the roof, which creates low pressure within the home to suck air in from all of the building's openings, creating this continuous flow of cool air throughout the space, which essentially eliminates the need for expensive 
expensive and wasteful air conditioning during the summer months. This space is appropriately fitted with a very green painted steel case and railings which serve to be the building's centerpiece, which frames a large dining area at the building's core, which efficiently utilizes the characterful step in the building's plan for its bench seating, where natural light pours down through the solar glass windows, which are fitted with temperature and rain sensors to accommodate the building's stack ventilation. Dining areas, and riads for that matter, often signify the coming together of a family or group, so it's quite fitting that this is located right at the center of the home, where this entire space can actually be sectioned off from the adjoining kitchen and living area using full-length curtains, which not only create visual separation within this very open living space, but these also provide some acoustic treatment to the building's hard surfaces, which saves this home from feeling hollow and empty, while also being quite playful and theatrical through their ability to turn this space into what is essentially a double height dining hall under the stars. Structurally, this house is built using a material that's rising in popularity called cross-laminated timber, which essentially, by laminating individual planks of wood together, it creates a material that has a stronger strength-to-weight ratio than steel, whilst costing significantly less than solid timber. And because cross-laminated timber, or CLT, is made from an entirely renewable carbon-eating resource like trees, it does all of this whilst being carbon negative, which helps to offset some of that unavoidable carbon that's created during the logistics of construction and the production of materials. But all of this isn't done just in the name of being climate friendly, as to maximize cost savings and waste, these structural walls have actually been meticulously designed to completely do away with the architraves, skirtings, plasterboard and door frames that you usually see in most homes. And this is done by notching the doors into this timber structure, which reduces labor costs and material waste while providing this home with an incredibly pure and honest design by completely exposing and celebrating this timber skeleton. But seeing as timber is prone to rot in wet conditions like London's winter months, externally, almost the entirety of this building has been clad in corrugated bitumen agricultural roofing. And despite being a material that you're only really likely to see on cheap farm buildings and agricultural barns, due to this material's low cost, durability, and waterproofing properties, it makes it arguably one of the most cost-effective rain screen claddings available to protect this celebrated timber structure within. As you make your way upstairs, this home only becomes brighter and brighter, and as you enter into the rooms, you begin to notice how Hayhurst & Co have somehow managed to squeeze five bedrooms and two bathrooms into this level of the plan, one of which is a master bedroom, which is fully equipped with a walk-in closet and an ensuite, as well as one other double bedroom and three smaller single bedrooms for the children and guests, where I really like that they've ingeniously divided what is essentially a bunk bed across two rooms, which gives each child their own space for self-expression, whilst keeping the family incredibly interconnected through this central riad, through all of the visual connections that it creates throughout the home. When considering Clyde Circus's historic past and the plant-loving clients on this project, it's almost as if the project's name wrote itself, playfully referencing the old buildings that once stood here years ago. But to me, what this project encapsulates is a fantastic demonstration of function over form through the use of affordable and sustainable materials and carefully considered passive ventilation that allows this home to be run off an air source heat pump and solar panels on the roof, which allows this building to surpass world-leading sustainability targets that are rarely accomplished on such a small budget. And along with the miniature greenhouse on this building's front facade, it's it sets a really clear example of what good biophilic design looks like, where nature is a contributor to a building's design rather than a hard to maintain feature or gimmick. 
So knowing this, it begins to become clear why a home like this is worthy of winning such an award, as below the shallow surface of what we perceive to be a beautiful building, when you expose the functionality and cost effectiveness of a structure, beauty often tends to take on a whole new meaning. But anyways, that's all I've got for this one, and do let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more architectural breakdowns like this, and make sure you're subscribed if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And remember, if you'd like to apply to be featured in my Architects Redesign series, you can still do that using the link down in the description, and support the channel by purchasing some of my wallpaper packs like this one that you can see in the background. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I'll be sure to catch you in the next one. See ya!